Martin Manning knows the steel beams, or members, must also be designed with safety in mind. What we had to do was to choose the, um, the sizes of the members so that they were strong enough to resist the forces that were induced within them. After four months, the design is finished. Manning is now confident that this building will stand firm. Yet earthquakes aren't the only force of nature that T3 must endure. The variation in temperature throughout the year are very great indeed. It gets very hot and it gets very cold. So on an annual cycle, the movement's quite large. When this super terminal heats up and cools down, it will grow and shrink by up to 80 centimeters. In fact, the movements are large enough to have a serious impact on the roof's supporting columns. The thermal movements of the roof are such that um, as the roof expands, it, it, it would have moved those columns too far and bent the columns. If the roof and columns do bend out of shape, it'll be a major disaster for the engineering team. Beijing's new airport terminal will have an enormous roof, spanning almost a kilometer at its widest point. Its dragon-like scales will silhouette against the sky, making it instantly recognizable. It's a symbol that's important to Terminal 3 Vice Commander Madame Zhu. When Foster presented the design that symbolized a dragon, we thought it was logical, since China has the culture of the dragon. It's an awe-inspiring design, but its sheer size could put the structure in serious danger. Steel expands and contracts as it heats up and cools down. In peak summer heat, this roof will grow by up to 80 centimeters at its widest point. Usually this problem could be solved by building a roof in separate sections. At T3, this is simply not feasible. The roof is a single span and is far too big. Instead, engineers must come up with a clever solution. We adopted many complicated and intricate methods. For instance, loosening and tightening the joints at different spots to relieve or minimize the pressure caused by temperature. But tweaking the regular joints isn't enough. They'll need 32 thermal expansion joints positioned between the columns and the roof at key points. As the steel roof expands, the joint glides along a sliding mechanism. The roof can grow and shrink without causing destruction. Terminal 3's gigantic roof may be safe from buckling in the heat, but it's not long before T3's enormous size causes another headache. This time for the baggage engineers. The system here at Beijing Airport is certainly one of the biggest in the world from a baggage handling system perspective. Baggage system experts fly in from German engineering firm Siemens. Led by engineer Jeff Martin, they begin to plan a $250 million state-of-the-art baggage system. It's expected to handle an awesome 19,200 pieces of luggage per hour. 68 kilometers of conveyor belt will hurtle baggage around the airport. If Terminal 3 is to be known as the Dragon, this system will be its lifeblood. The baggage handling system is the veins and arteries of the Dragon. Getting this giant system to fit inside the terminal's basement is like completing a giant jigsaw puzzle. There doesn't seem to be enough room within Foster's design for such a big system. It causes tension between architects and the engineers. At some stage, the whole team has to decide whether they're designing a system to distribute bags or whether they're designing an airport terminal. Then, Jeff Martin and his team hit upon a double-decker system. 
doubling overall capacity at a stroke. But this will create a new problem. They need more ceiling space. Uh, the original Foster's design was designed for a standard airport baggage system. And with the new designs and the new technology required, we had to drop the basement approximately an, an additional five meters. It will cost not just money, but time. And they must still meet the tight deadline. Normally a project this size is anywhere from three to four years in duration. Uh, unfortunately, because of the Olympics, we didn't have that amount of time. We basically had two and a half years. The only way to deliver on schedule will be to begin construction of the baggage system whilst the terminal is still underway. As Jeff Martin leads construction, system design changes are still filtering down. We didn't have time to do it twice. We had time to do it once and time to do it right one time. The person doing the design change is sitting at the computer doing the change. Oh, that's easy. No problem. But realistically, when you actually have to install that into the system, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with that design change. Jeff and his engineers must rise to the challenge. Despite the painful last-minute design changes, they somehow remain on schedule. The terminal buildings are rising fast out of the ground when disaster strikes at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, France. May 23rd, 2004. A section of the steel and glass roof suddenly crashes to the ground. Four people are killed, including two Chinese. The disaster shockwaves are soon felt in Beijing. At that time, there was a lot of construction going on in Beijing, and we paid a lot of attention to the accident. For architects and engineers around the globe, the Paris disaster is a reminder of the importance of safety. The cause of the collapse is thoroughly investigated, but in Beijing, nothing is underestimated. We were very cautious about the structural engineering and do not take anything at all for granted. With so many construction projects underway in Beijing, the Chinese know they must keep a close eye on design and construction methods. The government ensures strict guidelines are applied to all projects to ensure safety. The Chinese architects at T3 have worked hard to safeguard the highest standards. As the Chinese partners in the project, we have always paid close attention to the safety issue. We have every reason to believe the design is safe. With 50,000 workers on site, accurately monitoring the work will be no mean feat. Meanwhile, Beijing's roads are on the brink of gridlock. They must build new highways, subways and rail links or face transportation meltdown. No one wants a repeat of what happened in Athens before the 2004 Olympic Games. With only months to go, Greek authorities had not completed their transport network. They narrowly escaped an Olympic fiasco.